Good afternoon, folks. Witcher you here with a little discussion on uh, Fibonacci's uh, sequence or number. Now, um, although it applies to uh, art, Fibonacci's number was adopted, if I'm not mistaken, okay, and folks can correct me, okay, was adopted by Da Vinci, okay, and translated to art. Okay. Uh, everything but Fibonacci sequence. What is nice about that, and I only learned about uh, Fibonacci sequence. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, circa 2006 or 2007, and uh, I was introduced to Fibonacci sequence through uh, through art. I was doing bonsai and so on and so forth, and some of the the rules that were being applied and where it's come from. Uh, especially when we're talking about uh, foreshortening and all kinds of other artsy fartsy stuff, but that is not what I want to touch upon today. Um, I had an ability. I I have many talents, and I'm not trying to do this to be conceited or whatever. I got many talents, and that I have been blessed with, and uh, it's like many. Although we didn't put a name to it, it was sort of second nature, okay? Uh, we talked in the, the other episode, and I tried to put as much examples uh, as, as possible. Uh, when we look at the original picture, yuck, okay? Now, if we superanalyze that, the chair occupies one-third, okay? But if you're going to take a picture of the chair, then you're not going to have a uh, beach and ocean, okay? And that is where it becomes yuck, okay? Uh, put that chair, okay, against a white background, okay, where there's no foreground or no background, okay? And it's it's a chair, and we understand that. In this particular case, okay, it was a yuck. It was not a pee. When we look at the Mona Lisa with the goose, although there could be a, an explanation for that particular painting, and those who do feel like chiming in, by all means, but the goose was out of scale, so imagine, uh, you know, if you, it's hard to explain, okay, you either got it or you don't, and like I say, is when, uh, it's similar to going to the psychiatrist and getting a doctor to do the ink blot thing, okay, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? When I've used something, it either moves me or it doesn't, and there's no in-betweens, and I understand that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, okay, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. However, when we talk about aesthetically pleasing, it either is or it isn't, okay? And hopefully, this little series will explain to you why seem, certain things seem wonky to you, okay? Now you have the, the reason. Now, I can sit here today, categorically, I think we're five and a half billion people in the world. Would you believe me that only 10% of that entire 5.5% uh, population are outstanding individuals? Okay, whether it be uh, geniuses or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, I can categorically state this statement right now as I'm sitting in front of you, okay, discussing it. Why? Because Fibonacci said so. Okay, if we take <clears throat> a sample, that regardless of where it's from, of 100 people, okay, out of that bunch, 65 of them will be average individuals. Okay, now in that average individual, if you take that group, you will have 65% of that group that will be below average, okay, and 25 that will be above average, and so on and so forth. There's no ifs, ands, or buts, okay? But in that 65% uh, that we decided that they were uh, uh, below average, well, there's some, there's 65% that are really, really below average, okay? And it just continues to do that, okay? So out of 100 people, how many people are really outstanding? One. Why? It's mathematically proven, okay? So although Fibonacci sequence have been applied, okay, to art, it is manifested throughout what we do uh, on a daily basis. Uh, if we look at his sequence, his number, it's used in centrifugal pumps, okay? The volute of the casing, I'm, I'm an engineer, right? The volute of the casing is part of that, that calculation forms part of the volute for the maximum efficiency, okay, of a pump and all kinds of other uh, stuff. Um, when we look in nature, look at any tree and, uh, look at the balance, okay, of that particular tree, okay, study the balance of things. Uh, on the video, uh, how does it work, how does it apply to us? The last picture was there was of a building that seemed square, okay, and that building, okay, fits 
not only was it photographed properly, but it fits. Although square, if you start uh, dissecting that bu building, for the lack of a better word, there is numerous triangles in there that fits Fibonacci sequence and uh, the golden mean. So, getting back to uh, where uh, we uh, we were with this, and it, like I says, it doesn't really, it doesn't necessarily apply to art. Was my 1151, and I'm looking at this vehicle sitting on bench. I'm working on it, and so on and so forth. And there's something missing. Okay, um, I'm not one to to put my vehicles on plaques and so on and so forth just by storage space, but there was something missing. This vehicle, okay, is uh, two and a half by five and a half inches. It cannot fit on a board that's three quarter inches thick right off the bat. I know that. Why? It's too delicate. It's too uh, dainty or whatever. Okay, it needed less. Uh, it, it needed something else. So this board I just happened to have, like I said, it was ferreted away for another project and never used it. And I said, aha, I was able to find it. It's three eighths of an inch thick. So uh, that works. Um, I've always found that if you're trying to frame a subject, providing that the space all around is equal, the subject is framed. Okay. If we look at the plan view, I said I took my vehicle dimensions and all that, and I gave two and a half by five and a half, made it four and a half by seven and a half. Okay. And it worked okie dokie. It looks a little wonky. It looks like the frame is a little too small. Okay. When we look at the plan view, and you are absolutely right. Um, but we are not looking, okay, at the plan view. We are looking at the elevation. And once you fr you center that vehicle on that plot, and you are looking at it in person, okay, it is in balance. It is aesthetically pleasing. What is also aesthetically pleasing is that although we see the entire composition, we are drawn to the vehicle, okay? And in doing so, although we may still see the plaque, it's the vehicle that we're looking at. We're only looking. At, we're only seeing the, the 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 plaque in our peripheral version, for the lack of a better word. Okay, we are focusing on the vehicle, and although we might move our head around and so on and so forth, when we bring our head back up to whatever, 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 okay, our eye is immediately drawn to the subject, which is the vehicle. Okay, we are encasing the vehicle. We're not encasing the frame here. We are encasing the vehicle. We are showcasing the vehicle. Carlos uh, Grasshopper, and I, said, and I was able to post a link there in uh, to comment back to Sergeant Bones there in uh, the last video. And when we look at uh, uh, Carlos's video and his rendering of, of his, this particular uh, vehicle, it is, it is aesthetically pleasing. Now, some may argue that the, the 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 pedestal that it is on, or whatever the stand that it is on, is a little heavy, and uh, they would be right in making that assumption. Totally right. Okay. However, when we look at and what Carlos has done, the vehicle, okay, it, the, the 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 composition is the base and the vehicle and so on and so forth. His dimensions are are. Uh, in the course with Fibonacci's uh, sequence, and why? Because Carlos is an artist. Okay, he's a professional tattooer, and so on and so forth. I've seen his art, and yeah, he knows what he, he knows the golden mean and all that good stuff. So we've got his base and it's proportioned properly, and all that good stuff. And in order not to overwhelm the vehicle, okay, he positioned his vehicle on a diagonal, okay, giving him some some more length. But at the same time, while doing that, he created two di two triangles for his accessories. Well, okay, that's nice. Okay. But what he did, by that base being so heavy, okay, and uh, whatever, is that he elevated his subject, okay? He put it on a pedestal. And when you look at the subject and so on and so forth, you can see the law of thirds. The vehicle being the third third, or the third tier on a two-tier display. A craftly done, it's a little bit of hocus pocus that works. Okay, I you know I don't know if it was intentional or whatever. I believe there's a lot of thought that went into it, but it, it just happens to work because we're not looking at the base; we are looking at the composition as a whole. But we've elevated the vehicle, which is the competition. Now, the road that it's sitting on with a little grass, okay, and we got a couple of fuel barrels there, and we got a burn barrel there, and we got some pieces and all that good stuff, and all strategically laid out to complement. Okay, the composition, 
nothing. Every area, okay, like those two pieces of iron, okay, or is it three pieces of iron? And look, look at the, the way they're displayed in a triangle, okay? And uh, it it's not taking away from the subject. It's a, a it's a added interest to the composition. And then we turn it around and all that good stuff. And then we see uh, uh, the fuel drum there with the burn barrel and so on and so forth, okay? And it's not detracting from, it's something that you would expect to see there, okay? And uh, it's not detracting from the subject once again, okay? Very carefully done and so on and so forth. Uh, a diorama that works is a diorama <clears throat> where <clears throat> you should not have to tell a story, okay? That we have the composition here and then there's a story. The diorama should say to tell the story without, okay, having the, the owner explain what the viewer is seeing. And if you achieve that, you've achieved greatness and you've achieved great artistry, and that is what is supposed to happen. Now, everybody will get involved in looking at something and uh, take off on a, on a little journey of a reverie and so on and so forth, and there's nothing wrong with that, okay? And imagining things and so on and so forth, because it takes you there. It moves you, okay? If it took you there, it's because it moved you, and you went off on a tangent or whatever. You'll always come back to the subject, but it just happened to move you. So... Fubonacci sequence or Fubonacci's number, okay, is something that is utilized. Uh, it, it, our whole world is governed by it. Uh, warranties, okay. Now statistics, okay. If it falls under the bell curve and all that good stuff, that's where we want it to fall, okay. And uh, let's say, uh, and what they do is, okay, we know that 65% of the failures are going to occur between here and here, okay. So our warranty will be uh, there. Okay, and all that stuff. So, so that the, I've had several tools fail within a month after the warranty was over. Okay, uh, Craftsman is good for that. Okay, uh, you're, you're guaranteed for 24 months. Well, 26 months later, okay, 25, 26 months, your tool is broke. Okay, because it fell under the bell curve. Once again, that bell curve is Fubonacci sequence. So there's before and all that good stuff, and there's after and all that. And what are you going to find? Okay, before and after. Okay, is that. Uh, you may have 10% failure before, you'll have 25% failure after, okay, so you're only responsible for 10% of the warranty because everything else, okay, will fall after. So it's warranted for this period where it's the greatest percentage of uh, uh, <clears throat> the failures are going to occur and the customer doesn't know this. Uh, B. Leary, I've seen a warranty once 17 months, and that is a number, okay, that company is to be avoided at all costs. Why? Because they really uh, did some bean counting in order to figure out that, that the failure rate is happening at 17 months, and, you know, and so stuff like that. Uh, so hopefully... Um, a lot of people know about the gold and the golden triangle and all that. Uh, Hamilcar uses it, okay? Uh, I know Hamilcar is very, very heavy on art and all that good stuff just by some of these videos that he's posted, but his dioramas, okay, he he says he, he doesn't know about uh, Fubonacci sequence, perhaps because of the question, and of course there might be a language barrier there, but he utilizes it, okay, and I see it in his work, okay. <clears throat> Uh, local hobby show in 2015, and I, I was looking at a diorama that didn't even place. That was uh, well thought out, constructed, and all that good stuff. And the gold winner, okay, in the diorama section uh, was really, really surprising to me, okay? Once again, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but whoever judged those compositions, okay, didn't know what they were doing. Okay, in all honesty, diorama that one was way too crowded to start off with and broke every rules of engagement for the lack of a better word. Okay, so I'm not sure what they they were looking at. Okay, um, you can still represent a battle scene. Okay, and be proportionally correct, and it's, it's the whole composition was all wrong. And what were they looking at? I believe. They were looking more at the vehicles than the entire composition. And, of course, your eye is supposed to be drawn to the vehicles. But if you, when we're judging dioramas, yeah, your eye should be drawn to this, 
the scene, but we are judging dioramas, not the vehicle. And in this particular case, I don't believe that whoever was doing the judging or whatever, and there's more than one, so maybe all, I don't know. Okay, just take it for what it is, that particular one, okay, although a great diorama, okay, should not have taken gold. So uh, we've been on that for 15 minutes. Hopefully the uh, Fibonacci's number makes sense now. Okay, and uh, I leave you with uh, just think about how this thing is being manifested in your life now that you know what to look for, whereas before you couldn't explain certain things. The whole concept is not to stop what you are doing and start measuring and so on and so forth. If it looks good, okay, you take your measuring stick out and you start like I did for you know when my plaque turns in at freaking 61. Uh, it's a happy accident. Why? Because I knew the principles, okay, of what I was trying. You know, it just makes sense to do that. Um, building furniture, building cabinets, okay. Uh, uh, it, it all it, 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 it proportion. I did a partition in the living room, okay, between the living room and the dining room, and I got a big, uh, um, I got a fireplace, and it was uh, a little cubby hole, okay, to display my bonsais and so on and so forth. But the entire piece, the height of it, it didn't go to the ceiling and all that good stuff, but it stopped. Okay, and each, and there's separate, there's little cubby holes, okay, the shelves, they're uh, not asymmetrical, the other one, <laughs> okay, the, the one that we don't want if things to be equal, everything is unequal, but everything is proportion, if that makes any sense, okay, so I knew that going in, okay, and when we look at the, the piece, and what we see down below is two uh, silk screens, okay, of uh, uh, Asian birds and so on and so forth that are behind uh, uh, matte glass and behind that on the dining room side okay is where we keep our Tupperware reuse and repurpose okay we created a cabinet for a visual point of interest in the living room but it has the functionality in the dining room and that is where we start our Tupperware that is singing out of the box <laughs> It's just little things. It comes natural to some, and some it doesn't. And so, so that little thing. And if I'm able to enlighten anybody or help something, I know uh, Bill there is going. Hmm, makes a lot of sense now. So, I helped one individual, and I'm glad I did because that is what uh, sharing is all about: is be able to help uh, some individual. And uh, if folks want to discuss this, by all means, let's discuss this. I mean, I'm no subject matter on, I'm no subject uh, matter expert, but I'm willing to share what I do know and how it does apply to us in our daily lives. Without further ado, thanks for watching, folks. I hope you found this segment uh, informational and entertaining, if nothing else. Without further ado, Switcher, signing off.